episode 137, One Man Theatre. Introducing Stephen Smith on the BTS Creative Academy podcast, Uncut, with me, your host, Hello. Martin Colton. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, this, this, take two. Cool, okay. Yes, we're recording, that's all good. So uh, let's see how this goes then. <laughs> we'll try it. Fingers, fingers yeah. crossed. They've rebooted the Wi Fi, second attempt at our meeting. So, where did we get to? You were telling me about your apple of apple of my eye yes so this summer we'll be doing a a show in rugby in june a show in watford and a show in london both in july that was it was a great show i really enjoyed it a a one man one man story of um steve jobs his life his journey um and you're an actor that, that does that that you perform a lot of one man shows don't you yeah, it's been a bit of a means to a means to an end in terms of keeping of uh, keeping performing after and during the pandemic. Really, um, the first solo show I did was in 2018, which went really well, and I managed to get a a couple of um, uh, performances in Dubai, uh, which was uh, quite an eye opener in terms of creating something that could be. Uh, toured quite easily internationally mm-hmm. um the steve Jobs show is less easy to tour because of the four macbook computers we have uh on stage <laughs> with us but yes by and large all of the solo shows that i've created myself um are quite minimalistic but i like to think quite epic in their storytelling and uh and performance Mm. That's it's, it's. I find it really interesting you as an actor, and what you're doing. You've got you've got four one man shows going on at the moment, right? Yeah, I, I suppose. Uh, I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, I I could kind of do a lot of them uh, whenever because I've done them so much. But yes, to, my my kind of long term goal, and it's probably not too long until it happens really but my my long-term goal with all of this is to kind of experiment with producing a one-man rep season or uh, uh, that's what I'm calling it at the moment but essentially where in the space of let's say three weeks I could do six completely different shows uh all in maybe in rotation or Maybe every every the mon- Monday is is one show, Tuesday is another. I'm I'm still toying about with the idea of it, and it would be somewhat of a well a huge challenge for me as the one and only actor. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I kind of think that it would, it would be beneficial for a theatre to to take on something like that because you could offer such a wide variety of stories within a short, a short space of time. Um, and also potentially an audience as well, because I don't expect all of the audience to see all six, let's say six or seven shows. However, there could be a nice kind of multi-ticket discount or something. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I've been toying with. And, and I feel like, I feel like that would be a real fun uh rewarding but also quite uh yeah just uh I'd, i've never heard of anyone doing that before so i feel like in 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 that sense it should turn some heads my way and open up some more opportunities mm-hmm. and tell me about the the benefits to to you as an actor for doing these one man shows because it seems to me that you've found a, a way to have some kind of creative freedom with what you're doing yeah you know, yeah right? That that is right. Yeah, I guess a good word for it is autonomy, and 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 I suppose because I I left drama school. I studied at Lipper up in Liverpool, and I left in 2017. And I I got an agent, and uh, uh, but ever since then, I I found that even though my agent put me up for auditions, I I well a I never got the auditions. You've never got the job. I know. Also, I know what that's like. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I also found that 
I was getting work, um, albeit maybe not the big rooms, as it were, but I was keeping busy through my own contacts and creating work myself uh, through a theatre company that I set up at Lippa with some friends. And yeah, ever since, like I say, this, this, this first solo show that went to Dubai was a show called Dog Actor, and it was two Stephen Burkoff plays that I put into one double build show. And ever since then, there's been such a nice kind of feeling of it's completely up to me to book that in wherever I wish. Or I mean, with the Burkhoff show, there is a the whole conversation that needs to be had about performance rights and booking those via Stephen Burkhoff's agent and everything. Whereas some of the other stuff is completely up to me where mm. I do it and how often I do it. And, you know, how did, so how did there that is come... an autonomy, yeah. How did that come about? Because, like, so I've I've been acting myself and been trying to do this for twenty plus years, and I, I've never considered doing a, a one man show in that time. But now I'm seeing you do it. I'm like, wow, what a what a space to be in that you can just you can just decide right. I'm going to put together this show. I'm not relying on a cast of of other people. There's not there's going to be stuff to work on and put together. But on it, it's, it is all up to you, isn't it? It's all it's all within your hands. Whereas when you're auditioning for other people, you're asking them to be part of their thing all the time, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong. I, I love ensemble work and I love working with other actors and being in a scene. And, and uh, you know, I, I really live for those experiences. Mm. But in terms of just keeping busy and keeping some income coming in and and filling the diary, certainly I found the one one person shows have been really helpful. Um, I, I guess I'm a bit of a, an anomaly in the sense that... Um, I do do a lot of it all by myself in terms of even directing myself, but, but a big part of what I do is I do the marketing as well. You know, that's, that's a huge thing that not only I like doing, but I feel like I've got a good, good handle on it. And, uh, and I, I, I think when, when you can promote a show well, then that's kind of half the battle in a way I've had to learn to like social show, social media Mm -hmm. um uh but it comes with its uh perks and its disadvantages that um but when i first did the burkoff show and directed myself first time doing that and i didn't think i could do that i was really you know in in the early days of doing all this very nervous and very um just making it up as was i was uh, as i was going along but there, there was something i felt that i I, it was just justified with the Burkhoff show because Stephen Burkhoff's style is so big and bold and you're meant to be just ugly and physical and it's all mime and and you know so so it's very um I could literally set up a camera and watch it back and as long as it was physically looking right I didn't care about whether I was good or naturalistic and uh, 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 and those uh, th that is where I felt at the time that I really needed a director to kind of guide the realism of a situation whereas being a bit ugly and crazy and big and bold all of that I felt that I could just kind of direct myself uh with a camera um but I have since then realized that actually I feel like I've watched enough theater to know what I would like to see on stage so I I do I do feel quite confident in directing myself now um and I feel like I have a good awareness and I try and with all of my solo shows I try and um I put the audience experience on the top of the pedestal I like to think because there are a lot of solo shows out there where which I've seen where it seems very therapeutic for the actor to kind of just get it out of them something self-penned or you know very personal sometimes and I take my hat off to it every time I see that but what I've chosen to do is pick stories that are already out there and and I try and make it more about giving the audience a really good show rather than trying to 
uh, make it all about me, as yes, it were. Yeah. Do you see any dangers in directing yourself? I, for instance, have I, I've tried it a couple of times on a small scale. For instance, I've put together a showreel piece. And within that showreel piece, um, I directed myself for all the... I, I hired a camera crew um, and a lighting crew, sound crew, to put it all together. But I was the main actor. I got some other actors involved. But me being there, I directed myself. And when I watched it back, I was I was very unhappy with my performance. Um, I felt like I needed someone that was subjective and someone that could say to me, take a pause for a moment, think about what you're doing, restart. That's not what you practised. Um, <laughs> all of those moments where a director would come in and and shake you up a bit, I missed. So how do you, do you see any dangers in, in directing yourself? Oh yeah, um, certainly. <laughs> and I think the, uh, the interesting thing there is when you do have the opportunity to watch yourself back, uh, if you even, you know, I know you're talking about show reels and screen acting and stuff, which is so unforgiving in, in some ways because yeah, the camera is right there, isn't it? But, um, mm -hmm. But when even when watching some uh, theatre recording back, it's you know I still cringe at kind of watching myself. But I'm trying to I'm trying to be objective watching it back and making improvements for next time. Whereas okay. something that's on screen and you know there isn't necessarily a next time. That's it. That, that show it's, reels permanent. It's stuck. Yeah, in that totally. So with theatre, you can you can make it evolve, can't you? You can work on on what you did last time and make it better for the for the next time. Yeah, completely. And and from where uh, when I first did Dog Actor in 2018 to to where it eventually got, you know, or became how it eventually became maybe 3 years later fills me with confidence going into something new now because I know the first version isn't going to be complete. Um but yeah, there's definitely da dangers even just on a technical level where you feel like you're being loud enough, but you don't have someone to kind of tell you, oh, you need to be a bit more clearer or louder or, you know, fill the space a bit more. You kind of have to go with your gut a lot of the time and ask, you know, maybe the technician or something, maybe their opinion. Um, so yeah, it 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 is risky um and it isn't ideal i i would ideally want a bigger team around me but in terms of just keeping working and and uh and getting the getting the getting the work in and paying the bills mm -hmm. it's all right at the moment so yeah so you have found a way to to act without relying on on others at all at any any level what about you said about technical crew there so do you bring mm -hmm. you bring a crew with you when you do these things? Do you do you hire people? Do you arrange the other elements of the of the show? Yeah, it it depends. What I do uh, in terms of the sound design for all of my shows, I keep it all on my iPhone. There's a app called Go Button, and it's kind of like Q Lab for your phone, where right. you can cue all the sound effects and music and, uh, and make them all run into each other. And, uh, and essentially, usually I say, if I'm doing my Edgar Allan Poe show, one man Poe, it's called, if I'm doing that, then that, that show can be performed, performed with just a single candle. Um, it's very adaptive in terms of the lighting state. I've done a version of it in, in a theater with, you know, a hundred cues and all of that. But it could be performed just with one candle, whereas the sound design is quite particular, and there's there's a lot of sound effects and music throughout the whole script. And um, what I would do typically is I would tour to a theater or a gallery, a gallery or wherever, and uh, I would kind of quickly run through the app on my phone with someone there in house who I've potentially never met who's never seen the script or anything and i quickly have a quick you know half hour hour max um rehearsal just to kind of go through the whole cues and uh and they follow the script i clearly mark everything up um and uh you know i don't 
I don't assume they they could guess anything and make it I make it all very clear. So so I I can depending on the show I can go into any space with a show fitting in my suitcase and just quickly go through half an hour an hour before with the person there um you know in front of house or whoever um <laughs> but i do love you know i love trying to get my uh, my wife or my brother or some or a friend on on board to kind of help me um but i don't I don't need that um, yeah, the same you you're not going to be held back by anything it sounds to me it sounds to me you're going to you're going to do your thing you're going to act you're going to perform is that right yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And um and even if the the sound cues go a little bit wrong or a cue get you know, you you just kind of no the thing is about live theater is any mis well, with within reason, any any mistake that is made, the audience hardly ever notice. Um I think I remember actually the night you saw the Steve Jobs show, one of the computers failed in mid song. Yes, because yes, uh, on that show you're writing heavily on the technology of the four four max and they're old yeah. max as well aren't they in that shot in that <laughs> yeah show? yeah yeah um but in terms of preparation and and for stuff like that happening i mean my acting tutor at drama school um he always used to say you need to learn your lines forwards backwards and in another language and uh, so that i think that's really where the the confidence comes into it just doing enough preparation so that something can go wrong and your your lines are rattling through your mouth even if you're not thinking about them they're just on automatic you know and then and then the audience is none the wiser tell me a little bit more about why you do why you do it this way why you you run your own th you this is your own theater company as well isn't it free freedom yeah. theater Freedom Theatre, yeah. But why yeah. why are you doing it like this rather than waiting for that call, that audition, that that opportunity? I mean, part of it is I just love it so much. I I I really enjoy. Um, I like the challenges of uh, um, creating your own theatre and touring stuff. It's certainly not a instant gratification uh, way of going about it. I suppose I, I've had this kind of feeling ever since I was in my teens and pursuing acting seriously. I kind of always had this feeling that it would it would take a long time for me to, you know, in quote, make it, um, whatever that means. But I, I kind of wanted to appreciate the slow burn of it all. And and that's why I feel like I'm not I'm not so um, I like the fact it's snowballing now and I can kind of, I, I, you know, heads are starting to turn my way slowly but surely. Um, but I'm certainly not getting into the big rooms yet. I'm, I'm not getting seen for hardly any uh, big theatre projects or TV or film. So, you know, it's certainly not for everyone, this kind of path um and um and you know i i, I you can only run, run your own race really it's silly to compare um but yeah i feel like i'm and there's a few other things i mean so it's been about two years now since i've needed another job in terms of like waitering and bar work and you know for 10 15 years i was doing several zero hour con uh, contract jobs on on alongside you know waitering a bit and i i really enjoyed filling in the gaps with that um but I, some people I... would say you're living the dream some people would say that what you're doing right now is the actors you're living the actor's life you're not you're not working another job you're not having to wait tables somewhere or clean toilets you're you're a working actor yeah how does that uh, yes. feel like how's that on the good days oh it's it's really great i mean i it comes with a lot of frugality uh mm. that is for sure i do not live a glamorous spendy lifestyle um i mean for one thing it's been for uh, over four years now since i drank alcohol um and that was a big uh spiraling 
um, hole in my wallet um, for sure. Um, and ever since I've kind of cleaned up that part of my life, a lot of things have really gone well for me. Um, and and you kind of, you know, I, I certainly wasn't, I started, you know, learning about finances and, and looking after myself and nutrition and all, all of these things that compound over time, you know, and, uh, and yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that in terms of, you know, what I said earlier, you know, making it in quotations, I suppose in that sense, I have made it, but it's certainly not, I'm not comfortable there's certainly a big fire under my ass to kind of get moving because I've got rent to pay bills as well you know and 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 life things get in the way and you know it's um it's 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 certainly uh I I, I look forward to the days where I'm potentially getting better paid tv and film gigs um because it is very hard at the moment but i'm learning so much and i'm working a lot and i'm doing what i love mm -hmm. so it's yeah i'm 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 happy but there's always a uh, room for improvement for sure is there room for improvement is there room for more you're so busy <laughs> like i say you got you got four shows on the go right now and that's driving you all the way up to Edinburgh Fringe. Is that, that's right? Yeah. You're going to be at Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah. 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 So the two shows I'm doing at the Edinburgh Fringe is a new solo show um, called uh, A Montage of Monet. And that's about Claude Monet, the French impressionist. Um, and I'm also doing this Edgar Allan Poe show up there for the whole month as well. Um, and um, yeah. I, I, room room for more um well in in one sense no definitely not there isn't room for uh more well there's room for me to be doing more shows here and there it, it depends on the um what shows and when for example when uh so basically joel goodman who wrote the apple of my eye show uh we got approached by the theater in rugby that we're we're doing in june um saying would you like to do a one-off uh show of the steve jobs musical um they're attached to ru rugby school as well so they were able to make it worthwhile in terms of giving us a kind of guaranteed fee uh which is one kind of model of doing things mm -hmm. obviously it's, it's it can be box office splits or or you hire a theater and keep the whole box office but they were able to kind of give us a fee and because of that one singular show, I then decided to stack another couple around that to make it so I'm not relearning it for that one day. I'm relearning it for a, a series of performances in that m month, you know, roughly that month. So it, it, there's definitely room for more shows um, if I'm doing them. Uh, if it's something else, if it's a new show, mm -hmm. uh, then I certainly don't have time to be doing that until the fringe is over. Um, so you have to be strategic yeah. with your planning and your thinking. In yes. it's to carry on this this actor's life that you've got now, and to take that forward into something new, you have to find a way to keep this sustainable, don't you? Yeah, and and that's that's exactly right. Uh, sustainability in in the sense of just my energy and and my headspace, because you know I I said earlier that I, I I've learned to like social media, but it's certainly it's hard to be doing that alongside all the admin and the rehearsing of a show. And I I think in terms of improving my situation, it's not necessarily working more it's working smarter and and getting a team behind me i think i think what would be fantastic is eventually when i if i could kind of and i've done this for some of the shows but when i package these shows into kind of a pdf format then having someone who could act as more of, more of a manager than an agent where they could be booking in these shows and filling my diary and I just do the do the jobs that would save a lot of time, but also it, it exponentially kind of 
grow how much I could be performing throughout the year. And and, uh, so there's, there's that kind of way of looking at things. Cause I I do look at myself as more of a gigging musician than a jobbing actor. Right. I've kind of got my, my, my set lists. I got stories instead of, instead of songs, you know, it's, it's very much, I can plonk myself anywhere and get my guitar out. So, so to speak, you know, and so where do you find this person that that's going to come along for the ride with you, going to manage you? Where do you find uh, someone like that? Yeah, well, the, the, so I think I think it's 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 a it's a case of further proving my worth. Um, it's it's simply about asking and approach emailing, approaching people. Again, it takes a lot of time and, and it's a kind of funnel thing. It's a numbers game where you chuck a load of options in the top of the funnel and only a few trickle out the bottom mm-hmm. that might get back to you. Um, and uh, so I suppose I just need to do it and ask people, <laughs> ask uh, tour bookers and and uh, other producers, anyone who, who might be interested in doing that. Um, and being yeah. in the right place, like like I say, like you're going to be at Edinburgh later this year mm-hmm. and that's making sure that, you know, that's a, that's a place where the, the right people will be will hopefully be there that mm-hmm. might say oh i like this guy i like what he's doing this is interesting we can we can do something here yeah i hope so it's it's hard to kind of uh put it put it in a pitch though and because there's a lot of people in edinburgh who are looking for shows to tour or you know or companies and stuff but but, but to go out there and somehow communicate that I've got about seven shows ready to go to internationally tour. Um, you know, how, how to do that is my question. And I well, suppose maybe we're doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're letting them Any... know right now. <laughs> Anyone listening? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's certainly, it's certainly, I, I think it would be a fantastic opportunity for someone to, to work with me. <laughs> um, what, what is the opportunity we touched on it a little bit earlier then what is the opportunity of having one actor with seven shows what is that opportunity look what does that look like for a producer yeah i i, I like to think that it could be a um a, a worthwhile uh like say say if you're booking me in to a theater for a week in that one week, I could do different shows throughout the week. Um, so you're kind of getting a better value for money, I like to think. Um, and it's a small team, but with all these shows being well reviewed and some of them award winning and internationally touring, I feel like it it could it it could make financial sense in the sense of you know, one person, maybe a technician and a driver or something who could be the same per- person taking around essentially six shows and booking them in wherever. I, I, I also do a lot, of, a lot of work with schools as well. Mm-hmm. So I can tour these shows to schools. It um, sounds like to me in the theatre world, this is something that's low risk and high reward. Yeah, yeah, I think so. However... You know, if we're talking about the risks, I mean, what if I'm ill? You know, there's certainly no understudy for all of this um, that I can do. So uh, not that, you know, I'm one of these people like I never get ill, I never get ill. However, Mm -hmm. I am recovering from like the first cold I've had in like three years. And (laughs) oh boy, when I do get ill, I'm down (laughs) and out. I was, but it's nice to kind of have that excuse to recover. But Mm -hmm. no, I, I look after myself and I feel like that's, you know, it's a very low risk uh, not being able to perform a show. I'm, I'm very much a believer of the the show must go on mentality, um, for sure. Yeah. So how do you look after yourself then just doing this so alone? There's no one else that's checking up on you. There's no one else saying, Stephen, I think you need to rest today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, well, I, I do. I do take a lot of time to... Um, yeah, I, th- I think just the kind of daily habits and, uh, you know, doing, I do yoga every day. I do some reading every day. Um, you know, I like to think a holiday is a state of mind more than anything else. And in that sense, I take a holiday every day. 
you know, I kind of keep myself quite mentally um, happy and, and I, 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 yeah, it's, it's certainly not one size fits all kind of thing, but I think, um, yeah, I just kind of look after myself. I mean, I've been experimenting with um, intermittent fasting, which isn't for everyone, but I find my energy um, uh, has improved ever since I've been just reducing my uh, eating to eight hours a day um you know 16 hour break in between it's uh and i'm not religious about doing that and i don't do it every day but um i try to so there's there's it's a process um in terms of learning the lines as well throughout the pandemic i really really challenged myself uh on learning all of these huge chunks of script and i began to realize that it's um I, I know how long it will take me now to learn, a, a, you know, a, a full 50 minute long play. So I can I can I can kind of like really factor in the line learning process now, which is a something it, it's all about muscle memory, really, just kind of getting it said out loud. Um, so as, a, as an actor, you've learned to to know yourself. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a nice way to put it. Um, I really feel like the ever since because during the pandemic, I started going, uh, going really headlong back into my love of uh, classical literature and gothic horror, and and um, and created this Edgar Allan Poe show. And ever since then, really great things have been happening to me, and I, I feel like that's such a lesson that any artist should take on board and and really i always now advise people to really hone in on what makes you a right weirdo and honor that and honor your inner child um because because yeah i used to love all that when i was a kid but I, I i tried to be too cool in my teenage years i tried to fit in more mm -hmm. than more than you know uh, honor my weirdness but ever since the pandemic, where, where we all felt a little bit childlike and vulnerable in a way, I kind of went back into my comforts, uh, my my kid comforts, uh, childhood comforts. And, and, and ever since then, it's been really nice kind of honoring that. Mm -hmm. So so that's certainly one bit of advice I like to say is, is really, really hone in on what makes you you. Mm. And that's, it sounds to me like you really have done that. So I want to find out from you, changing the subject slightly. What does the what does the future look like for you? What are your what are your hopes and dreams moving past moving past Edinburgh? What does that what does that look like? Well, um, I'm I'm really interested in uh, during the pandemic. I I kind of created some digital theatre shows um, where essentially I came up with a a new style of digital theatre where you do it's it's essentially a one shot film but a live streamed one shot film uh so it's kind of like a live live film as it were and i'm really interested in in um developing that as an art form and and also teaching it to actors because it really especially actors in training because i i i really feel like it gives you no excuse not to be working if you can create you know potentially award-winning digital shows with just your mobile phone and free to use live stream technology that can reach all over the world mm -hmm. like you've got no excuse not to create now and i like to enthuse that in in younger actors so I, i'd love to get a few more kind of workshops and teaching gigs um i went back to my old drama school last year and did five weeks of teaching the students how to do just that mm -hmm. um but yeah i i would love to keep on booking in my solo shows and get expand my team which at the moment is just me so yeah prove my worth this summer and beyond and hopefully mm -hmm. people will be like hey i really want to work with you and and book you in and take a commission of what you get uh, uh you know what you do um like an agent would Mm -hmm. so build building that team 
And that, mm. that's really interesting as well, what you're saying there about the, the technology is there for us to create. Tell me a little bit about a bit, bit more about that, that we've got, you know, we've got things like our mobile phone in our pocket that's got a, a 4K camera that, mm -hmm. you know, that, that if you'd have gone back in time 10 years ago, that would have sounded like science fiction. Yeah. But now we yeah. have this technology available to us. We can edit films on pretty much all laptops now. What, yeah. what, is, stop, what is stopping us from creating? Uh, well... Yeah, it's it's somewhat oversaturated now, isn't it? In the sense of everyone can create, and there's a lot of short form stuff out there, um, which seems to get the more popular popularity. Uh, you know, it's, it's um, yeah, e anyone can do whatever they want now with um, filmmaking uh, with a mobile phone. Um, yeah, I I think. In terms of, I'm, a, I'm always a theatre enthusiast and I love live theatre. And I like to think that even though I'd love to develop digital theatre and, and inspire people to think more digitally, it's certainly not veering on, you know, the death of live theatre in that regard. Or I just, I just think it's the most inclusive, uh, accessible way of creating and watching theater uh or uh, creating it digitally um but i'm not a big fan of zoom shows or uh you know i, I never I, I made my shows in response to seeing a lot of the zoom theater shows out there so i think there are better ways to do it 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 but there's certain it just takes a lot more uh rehearsal time and and yeah you just got to really Again, put the put the audience on the pedestal there, and be honest with you, with yourself. Is this digital experience something that the audience are enjoying, or is it just great for me? You know, and I think I think and, it's and, got the and, and maybe yeah, there are two things to consider there, and maybe it's not always a bad thing if we're doing it for ourselves. Maybe it's you know maybe we can create our art for ourselves, and maybe that will find the audience, or maybe we look to find do it just for the audience. Uh, yeah, there's two different yeah. things there, and I guess you've got to consider what is it you what is it you're looking to achieve here. Yeah, completely, and and also you know it it, it depends how much your audience are paying as well. You know, if if they're paying a hefty fee to watch your art, then you should. I think I think it's 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 more on the spectrum of let's make their experience you know really good. However, if you're offering stuff for free, then yeah, for sure. Like, you know, um, uh, express yourself. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, express yourself either, either way. But I think in this day and age, we've just got to be very wary that there's a kind of like cost of living and crisis. And, and you know, it's hard to get people to pay to see emerging artwork. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's really hard. Um, but I like the challenge. <laughs> yes. Well, I look forward to seeing you uh, at Edinburgh uh, later this year. Um, I'll be up there myself, so I'll come find you and find your show. Uh, just before we wrap this up, because we've got a minute left, just um, tell me tell me once more, what is the show up in Edinburgh that you're doing and how will we find you? Right, yeah, so you can find my work at freedomtheatre.com that's T-H-R-E-E-D-U-M-B theatre.com and we're at uh, three, the number three dumb theatre on all of the social media and the shows we're doing up in Edinburgh is a montage of Monet which is the 2nd to the 17th of August and One Man Poe which is the 2nd to the 24th and uh, One Man Poe is a quadruple bill of Edgar Allan Poe gothic horror stories uh, which I kind of have split throughout the month and the Monet show is a new show about the French impressionist, the guy who did the water lilies. <laughs> uh, and, and those are my new, uh, the, big, the big projects at the moment. But thank you very much for having me. No problem at all. No, thank you ever so much for your time. Uh, thank you for all the wisdom and knowledge that you shared along the way as well. And uh, if, if anyone is watching or, or listening, we, we appreciate you for joining us for this conversation. And um, yeah. Thanks once again, Stephen. No Speak worries. to you soon. Thank you. Catch Thank you later. You. See you soon. Bye-bye.